Imagine you are on a game show. Three doors stand in front of you. Behind one of them is a brand new car. Behind the other two, goats. You really want to win the car more than anything right now. You decide to hope for the best and point to door number one. The host, Monty Hall, smiles and then opens door number three, revealing a goat. Now, he looks you in the eye and asks, do you want to stick with your door or switch to door number two? It feels like a 50-50, right? But it's not. One goat is gone, two doors left. Why would it matter? Let's rewind. When you first picked door one, you had a one in three chance of picking the car. That means there was a two in three chance the car was behind one of the other two doors. Monty knows what is behind each door, and he always opens a door with a goat, never the car. So when he opens door three and reveals a goat, he is giving you information. As a result, the two and three chance doesn't split, but transfers to the remaining door. Thus, if you switch doors, you are twice as likely to win the car. As mentioned earlier, initially you have a one in three chance of picking the car and a two in three chance of picking a goat. There are two possibilities here. First, you pick the car with one in three chance. The other two doors both hide goats. After Monty opens one of those, you switch, and lose. Second, you pick a goat with two and three chance. Monty reveals the other goat, and when you switch, you win the car. Yay! The same conclusion can be inferred if you use charts. There are three possible arrangements when you pick a door. In one of three cases, you hit to the target. In two out of three cases, after Monty reveals the other goat, you switch and win. Now, let's scale this to 20 doors. There is only one car and 19 goats. The chance you initially pick the car is one in 20. After Monty opens 18 doors, which are all goats, you're left with your original door and one other. So switching now gives you a 19 out of 20 chance of winning the car. Still not convinced? Let's use Bayes' theorem to prove it mathematically. Let's define our variables. There are three doors, A, B, and C. Let's say we chose door A and the host opens door B. We want to find the probability that the car is behind door C, given that the host opened door B. The formula is the following. The probability of host opening door B, given the car, is behind door C, multiplied by the probability of the car being behind door C, divided by the probability of the host opening door B. Initially, the probability of the car being behind any of the doors is 1 over 3. There are three options, given we pick door A and the host opens door B. If the car is behind door A, the host would randomly open either door B or C. So the probability of the host opening door B given the car is behind door A is 1 over 2. If the car is behind door B, the host cannot open that door. So the probability of the host opening door B given the car is behind door B is 0. And lastly, if the car is behind door C, the host must open door B since it is the only remaining door with a goat. So the probability of the host opening door B, given the car is behind door C, is one. These three values are called likelihoods. Now as Bayes' formula implies, we should update the initial probabilities by multiplying them with their respective likelihoods. The total probability, the denominator, is the sum of those probabilities. If we plug in all the values, the updated probability that the car is behind door C becomes two over three. Mathematically and logically, switching doors gives you a two out of three chance of winning the car. The Monty Hall problem is a great reminder that our instincts can sometimes mislead us. If you found this explanation helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more clear and fun explanations. See you next time.